Hello everybody and welcome back to another JavaScript tutorial. So in this video we are going to be talking about for loops. Now for loops are the most common type of loops and I would say almost one of the most common types of expressions that you will see in code. They're responsible for millions upon millions of different tasks. They're fundamental so you really need to make sure you understand them before moving forward into some more complex topics in the language. So what is a for loop? Well, a for loop is used when you want to loop a defined amount of times or you know how many times you want to loop. So in the previous video, we talked about while loops where we looped based on a condition. Now that condition could change at any point in time. It, the user could change it. It could change from different areas of the code. And essentially, we don't know how many times we're looping with that condition because it's just whether that condition is true or whether it's false. Whereas here in our for loop, we actually usually know exactly how many times we're going to be going through the loop. And I'm going to talk about that now and show you how this works. So the basic syntax for a for loop is for you're going to define a variable in here and I'm just going to type it out and then we'll talk about it later. We're going to put a condition here and we're going to put an increment step here. Now, I just want to show you guys how this works and then I'll explain the entire thing. So just maybe you can use some intuition and get an idea of what I'm doing here. But I've just done a for loop. I've said var i equals zero. I is less than 10. I plus plus console.log i. I know this is confusing, but let's have a look at this here. What we get zero through nine printed out to the screen. OK, so what the heck did I do and how does this work? Well, the first step of a for loop is to define a variable. In this case, I'm going to call it i. You can call it whatever you want. <clears throat> and set it equal to an initial value. This initial value is going to be the value that you start looping at. Next, we type a condition. Now, this condition is the condition that will be used to run the for loop. It must involve the variable here that you used, so I have to use i here. And then we have an increment, so i++, plus plus, and this tells me how much to add to i every time one of these loops successfully completes. Inside of these curly braces, it's what's going to happen whenever we loop. We could, of course, do multiple things in here like console.log Tim, right? And then if we go here and we refresh, we can get Tim every other time after all these words. But that is the basics to how this works. Now, what I can do is manipulate these numbers so that I can loop a different amount of times or through different numbers. So, for example, rather than adding one each time, I could add two. So this is how much you're adding to i every loop. And now watch what happens when I have my numbers. I go from 0 to 8, but not to 10 because obviously i was less than 10. I could start at a different value. I could start at value 5. So now we will get 5, 7, 9 printing out because we want 5 and then we added 2 each time. And that is how a for loop works. So you just start at some value, you're less than some value, and then you have i plus equals, you know, whatever. Now in here, we can do all kinds of different things. I can also break out of this loop if I want. So I could say something like if I equals equals seven, I could break. And now what we'll get is, or we should get at least is just five, seven printing out. And we do because we broke when I equals seven. And this break keyword works the same as it does for a while loop. It simply breaks out of whatever closest loop we find, which is this for loop. And yeah. So now what I'm going to do is show you guys an example of how we can loop through an array in here and actually see if a specific value exists in the array. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create a function. And what I want this function to do is to look in an array for a certain value and return whether we found that value or not. So this will be a little bit of review from functions in case we uh, forgot about them before. So I'm going to say function find in array like this. And I'm going to say ARR, which stands for my array. And I'm going to say value, which stands for what we're looking for. Now, what I'm going to do is write some piece of code that's going to look through the array and tell me if a value exists in it. So what I'm going to do is make use a for loop, actually. And you guys will see how this works here. I'm going to say for int i equals zero or sorry, not int i. I'm coding in Java right now. We'll say var i equals zero. We'll say i is less than arr dot length. And remember, arr is going to be an array. And then we'll say i plus plus. Now, what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to say if arr i equals equals value return true like that. OK, uh, if I could spell true correctly. Now, at the end of this loop, I'm going to return false and we're going to run through how this works. OK, so what have I done here? Well, I've essentially created a for loop that's going to look through every element in the array that I pass in because it's going to go from zero 
to whatever the length of the array is and we're going to check some value every time inside of this loop so what i'm going to do is say if the value at array whatever index i'm at is equal to the value we're looking for return true because that means we found the value so we can simply return true and by doing this that will automatically break out of this for loop so we won't continue to loop anymore we'll just return to wherever we were called from now let's say we loop through all the elements in the array and we don't find the element well we'll step out of that loop we'll start moving down we'll read this return false and then we'll simply return false because that means we did not find the element we were looking for so let's actually call this function and see if this works so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say var arr equals and in this case we'll say one two five six seven maybe we'll throw a tim in there we could throw a true why not now what i'm going to do is simply say console.log and we'll do the name of the uh, function here so find an array and then what i'm going to do is pass the array and what is the value that i want to look for well actually let's look if five exists in the array so the output here should be a true or it should be a false and let's have a look at our console here we refresh we get true as we did find five in the array now what if i do tim three is that in the array well let's look here no we get the value false so that's just a very basic example of what you can do with a for loop it's very powerful you can do lots of different things now i will show you some embedded for loops and then i'm going to talk about four of either in this video or the next one but let's leave that function up here for now and what i want to do is i actually want to make another function and i'm going to call it um n squared let's like this okay n squared now in here what i'm going to do is take some value n and what I want this function to do is print out the value n but squared. So whatever n is, I want to print out that like amount of times squared. Now, I know this is confusing, but you guys will understand what I mean in a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a for loop. And inside here, I'm actually going to say var i equals zero. i is less than, and in this case, n. And then we'll say i plus plus. Now, what I'm going to do in here is make another loop. And I'm going to say for var j equals zero and i'm going to say in this case we'll say j is less than n and then j plus plus and then what i'm going to do in here is say console dot log and we'll simply print uh i don't know we'll just print run okay so what i wanted this to do was simply have something printing out to the screen n squared amount of times now how do we do that? So this is n. We want to print some value n squared amount of times. Well, what I could have done is the exponent. So I could have done n and then to the exponent 2, which I think I showed in previous videos how to do. But I want to explain why this will actually print the value run n squared amount of times. And for those of you that are unfamiliar, n squared is simply n times n, right? So it's n times n two times, which is that. Okay. So how does this work? Well, we have this first for loop that runs from i equals zero to n, which means it's going to run actually n times. I know people are like, well, why do you have it less than n? Well, because since we start at zero, we go up to n, but don't include n. So that will actually be n amount of times that we will loop. And then inside of this for loop, we have another for loop that starts j equals zero and goes j less than n, which means this is going to run n times. So if this is running n times, and this is running n times and this runs every time one of these runs well this actually gives us the value of n squared because what's going to happen is this is going to be on loop zero this is going to run already n times right then this is going to be on n uh what is it i equals one so now we're going to have n plus n and then plus n and then plus n and we're going to keep doing that n times right and that's how many times this is going to loop now, if you're confused by this, just ignore it. It's not that big of a deal, but I just wanted to show you guys some different things that we could use. So now what I'm going to do is n squared. I'm just going to put five in there. Now you guys should know that that value is 25. So five times five. Let's refresh this. You can see that it printed 25 or run 25 times. Now, if I put a value like three in here, obviously we should get nine and you can see we're getting nine there. So these are my kind of two examples with for loops i'm actually going to stick the uh, or stay with the four of loops for the next video so we'll talk about those there but hopefully this gives you an idea how you can use for loops again you have a variable you can start it wherever you want 
you have a condition, this is what you're going to loop until, and then you have an increment. So what you're adding to this counter variable here, you can obviously put for loops inside of for loops if you want to. That's what we've done here. And you know, a really great way to loop through elements is to use a for loop. And if you want to check if something exists, then you could do something like this, check it against a value and you know, put it in a function, return true, all of that fun stuff. So anyways, that has been it. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next JavaScript tutorial.